Hey guys, this is Test 64 Game 4. This is the Bookshelves game. It is a matching game because we are assigning the eight books to one of three shelves, top, middle, or bottom. Now, I've laid out a lot of stuff here, but don't worry, I'm going to explain all of it. Basically, we've got the eight books, and they tell us that we have three different shelves, top, middle, and bottom, with at least two books per shelf. Now, they tell us that more books are on the bottom shelf than the top one. So I wrote down that B is greater than T for bottom is greater than meaning larger or larger in quantity than the top. This gives us two different possible layouts of spaces for the books. We could either have two on the top, three on the middle, and three on the bottom, or we could have two on the top, two on the middle, and four on the bottom. These are the only two different ways that we can lay out the books to shelves while still having at least two books per shelf and covering all of the eight books. So I've laid out a few different diagrams here, but don't worry about those just yet. They tell us that I is on the middle shelf. So on each of these diagrams that I will explain in a moment, I put I on the middle shelf, on the middle row. They tell us that K is higher than F. So K is higher than F. It's before F. I used a branch, but I branched it down rather than t the typical left to right like you would have in a regular ordering game because this game is being laid out vertically. We know that O is higher than L, so O is higher up than L. And then F and M are together, which means that K is higher than both F and M, which will be occurring on the same shelf. And shelves are rows in this game, so they'll be horizontal together. Now, I laid out three different diagrams here. The top two are representing our 2, 3, 3 layout, meaning 2 on the top, 3 on the middle, 3 on the bottom. And this bottom diagram I've laid out where we have two on the top, two on the middle, and four on the bottom. Now, why do I have three different diagrams here? It's because I'm using the fact that F and M occur in the same row to create multiple main diagrams, since we know that those variables also have to be lower than K. So, for example, in the top diagram here, I could have FM on the middle, or FM on the bottom. So I make two different diagrams, the top diagram and then the middle diagram, each representing the different possibilities for FM. So on the top diagram here, I'm going to put FM on the middle row. And then on the middle diagram, I will put FM in the bottom row. Of course, we always have I in the middle. Now, we have to have K higher up than FM. So on the top diagram, of course, K will have to be on the top level. In the middle diagram, we don't know exactly how that's being laid out. In the bottom diagram, I could have thought about putting FM on the middle versus FM on the bottom. The issue is that there is no room for FM to be in the middle here. We already have I in the middle, as is always the case due to the second rule of the game. So for that reason, we will have to have FM on the bottom row in the 224 layout. There is no room for it in the middle and then K could be on either top or middle, we don't know. One last thing I did here is I put down a few simple restrictions for what cannot happen in a particular row. So because O must go higher up than L, L can never be on top, and O can never be on bottom. So I laid it out for each of the three diagrams here. Also, since K is higher up than FM, K can never be on the bottom level. So I represented that as well on each of the three diagrams. Now, the, you notice the top diagram the top and middle rows are completely filled in. So therefore, every single remaining variable, meaning L, G, and H, must go on the bottom level. And this diagram is completely fleshed out. So in other words, when FM goes in the middle, and we have only three people on the bottom, everything is fully determined. The other diagrams are a little bit more open-ended, though. But anyway, these three diagrams, I'm just going to refer to them as, let's say, 1, 2, and 3 from now on, just to avoid using the top, middle, bottom language throughout the course of this game, since those also refer to particular rows. Anyway, this is our initial setup for the game. So question number 19 is a general could-be-true question. They're not using an orientation question here. They're jumping right in, asking us for a partial orientation question regarding what could be on the bottom level here. So we know the bottom level has to have at least three things. It either has three things on bottom or it has four things on bottom. So right away, choice A can be eliminated because it has only two books. 
we know that the correct scenario will have to have either LGH or FM. Now, unfortunately, they did not make having only LGH an answer choice here. So the correct answer to this question will have to contain both F and M. And only one remaining choice has both F and M when it has three people. The other has F and M with four people. So right away, we can now get rid of C and E as well. And then we're down between F, H, M, which would be the middle scenario. So I'll slap that in right there. The bottom one is F, G, M, O. The problem, of course, is that O cannot be on the bottom level because it has to be higher up than L. So we can eliminate D, and B is our answer for number 19. Next, number 20, they're asking us what would fully determine the layout of all the books to shelves. So we just want to run through the choices and ask ourselves what would fully determine this. Now, it turns out that you know the top diagram was the most filled in, so we're going to hope that they're referring to something that could only happen there like I and F being together or I and M being together, since there's no way that could happen anywhere else other than diagram number one, since diagrams two and three have I, F, and I, M separated. Turns out choice A does that, saying I and M on the same shelf. That could only happen in diagram number one, where everything is fully determined. So for that reason, A is our answer to number 20. I will look at the rest, though. K and G occurring on the same shelf. No reason to think that could not happen in either diagram two or diagram three, so it does not fully determine things. Looking at C, L and F on the same shelf would never happen in diagram one, but we could easily put L on the bottom level of either of these. There's no reason to think that we couldn't. So C's gone, M and H on the same shelf as each other would never happen in, the, in diagram number one. But again, just like looking at you know, M and H together, we could have had L and F together just the same. Of course, F and M in this game are completely interchangeable. No difference between them at all. So D's eliminated, then looking at E, H and O on the same shelf as each other, that could perhaps happen in the top level of either diagram two or diagram three. So for that reason, E is gone, leaving A is our answer for number 20. Next, number 21, general must be true question. Just run through the choices, seeing if something has to be the case. A says, you know, O higher than M, meaning O is on top and M is on middle, or O is on middle, M is on bottom, etc. Anyway, that definitely happens in the top possibility. And then in diagram two, the diagram number one, and then in diagram two and diagram three, we have to have M on the bottom, yet O cannot be on the bottom. Therefore, we know that whether we're in diagrams one, two, or three, any of those, O will be higher than M. Therefore, it is a must. And A is our answer for 21. I will look at the rest though. B says K higher than G. That certainly happens in diagram one, but does it have to happen in two and three? Not necessarily. They're not related at all in the rules. There are no rules regarding G at all, as a matter of fact. Why couldn't we have K on the middle and G on top for either diagram two or diagram three? No reason to think we couldn't, so B is gone. Looking at C, I higher than F. That happens in the diagram two and diagram three, but then in diagram one, they're on the same level. Therefore, I does not have to be higher than F. C is gone. Looking at D, G higher than O. In the top in diagram number one, we have O higher than G. That's proof right away that, that G higher than O does not need to happen. So D is gone. Then looking at E, F higher than L happens in diagram one, but in diagrams two and three where F is on the bottom level, perhaps L could be on the middle level. No reason to think that, to think that, that, that could not happen. So for that reason, E is gone. A is our answer for 21. Next, number 22, if G was on the top shelf. So right away, Diagram one is irrelevant since G could not fit on the top shelf. There we know G's on the bottom shelf. Let's look at diagrams two and three. We could slap G into the top level and go from there. So when G is on the top level here, we know that either H or L will have to be on the bottom level. I mean, if you think about the eight variables that we have here, F, G, H, I, K, L, M, O, we've already used up G, I, F, M in both diagrams two and three. So if we cross those off, G, I, F, and M, what are we left with? We're left with H, K, L, and O. Those are the variables we have left to deal with. I'll just write them down. H, K, L, and O. So for diagram two, since O and K cannot go on the bottom level, that really leaves only H and L remaining out of the four variables we're, we're left to deal with here. On the bottom level, we know that since K and O can't go there, that means both H and L have to go there. There is no one else who could. O can't do it, K can't do it, and G, I, F, M were already used. 
So in this diagram number three right here, what we have left are simply k and o. So those are interchangeable on the top level and the middle level. Then in the diagram number two, where we have a bit more ambiguity, we know that since L cannot go on the top level, that simply leaves one of H, K, or O. So you, I'll just write them down here. Those are the three that we could choose from for the top level. But anyway, they're asking us right now for the middle level, which is a little bit tough, but we can still get there. If you look at diagram number three, which only has two people on the middle level, that means that choices A and B must be referring to the diagram three layout of two, two, four for top, middle, and bottom. Now, in order, for ha to have, in order to have two variables listed only, the answer must be I, O, or I, K. Now, neither of those is a choice for A or B, so for that reason, we can eliminate A and B off the bat. To have only H, I, or only I, L, that would have had to be, again, in the 2, 2, 4 layout, but that's impossible because we need H and L to be on the bottom level in the 2, 2, 4 layout. So now we have to look at diagram number two, where we have some ambiguity regarding the middle level, and we know that we have exactly three people there. So we certainly can't have F in the middle level, since F has to be on the bottom level in diagram two. So for that reason, we can eliminate choice E, since it lists F. So now we're down to C and D, H-I-L versus I-K-L. Now, H-I-L is not going to work. If you try it out, let's see what happens. We put them there, we put it there, we can't have anybody left to be on the bottom level. We've already used up H and L in the middle, so this slot can't be filled. No one can go there. Therefore, HIL is impossible and C is eliminated. I will look at D though. So to have IKL on the middle, what would happen then? Everything works fine. We can't have L on the bottom level, but that's okay because H is there. And then we can't have H on the top level, but we could have either K or O there. Of course, it's not really going to be K since K is on the middle, therefore it's going to have to be O. So it's G-O-I-K-L-H-F-M. Works perfectly fine, therefore D is our answer to number 22. So finally, number 23, if L was higher than H. We already know that O is higher than L, so they're extending this sequence to go from O on top to L on middle to, to H on bottom for certain. No ambiguity at all regarding that since there's only three different levels. So the top diagram number, diagram number one is going to be irrelevant here since L and H are together on the bottom level. We're going to use diagrams two and three here. And it's quite clear that O is going to be on top, of course, because there are only three levels. So O is on top, L is on middle, H is on bottom for both of these diagrams. So these diagrams become fleshed out pretty quickly. Let's see how much more we can fill in. We know that we've already used up OIL, FMH. That leaves only G and K remaining for the bottom level. But since K can't go there, since K is higher than both F and M, G will have to go on the bottom level for diagram three, leaving K to go on top for diagram three. Then in diagram number two, there is a little bit of ambiguity because K could be on either top or middle. Either way, it would still be higher up than F and M. So that's ambiguous, it could go either way. So K slash G on the top level, G slash K on the middle level, and diagrams two and three are fully fleshed out here with a little bit of ambiguity in diagram two, but that's okay. Anyway, they're asking us what must be true. We'll just run through the choices. Must F and G be on the same shelf? No, in fact, in diagram number two, that never happens, although in diagram three, it is happening. So for that reason, because it's not a must, A is eliminated. G and H on the same shelf as each other. In diagram number two, that never happens. Diagram three, it does, but because it does not have to happen, we can eliminate B. Next, C, H and M on the same shelf as each other. That is happening on the bottom level of both diagrams two and three. Therefore, C is a must. It's our answer for 23. I will look at D and E though. I and G on the same shelf as each other. Never happens in diagram three. Therefore, it does not have to happen. Also, it doesn't always happen in diagram two if G was on top. Finally, E, K and O on the same shelf as each other. Happens in diagram three, but does not have to happen in diagram two. We could have K on the middle and G on the top, in which case K and O would not be on the same shelf, eliminating E, leaving C for 23 if you didn't get it before.